Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Chris Trevelyan coming to you live from Westminster, Colorado. Um, I'm here with Gregory LaPere, Marketing Director for Optical and Imaging Trimble, and Jason Hayes, Product Manager for um, 3D Scanning Software. And today we're excited to run you through a presentation and introduce you to the Trimble X7. So for all of you that weren't able to join us at Energeo, um, here's your opportunity to learn more about the X7 and to ask us some questions at the end of the show. So without any further ado, let's get started. The Trimble X7 3D laser scanner. So here at Trimble, we set out to build a well-balanced solution that really focused on efficient performance in the field we wanted this solution to be simple. We built in exceptional innovations that really kind of boost the user confidence and, and make this product super easy to use. Um, in order to do that, the product had to be really smart. So there's a lot of breakthrough technologies in this scanner uh, that allow us to deliver this precise and efficient in-field data collection experience, uh, really driving and empowering the whole scanning process. Um, but most important for us at Trimble is uh, the professional nature of all the products we release on the market. So we know that uh, with the Trimble name tag, the instrument must have the data quality and must be uh, you know, ruggedized and be your business partner in the field. So we really wanted it to, to resonate with these three um, uh, ideas in mind as, as we went about creating the solution. The simplistic and the simple part of the Trimble X7 is really centered around, I would say, the, the field workflow that's suitable for the brand new scanning user or even the experienced seasoned scanning user. Uh, a lot of that has to do with all the work and design that's gone into the intuitive perspective software, um, which allows you to operate, uh, allows you to operate the scanner, manage your scan projects, view the data uh, in full 3D in real time and, and just validate that your whole job is being done correctly. Uh, we've also introduced a, a fast image capture routine. We wanted you to use uh, the image capture routine on this scanner in the field and, and by doing it um, in less than a minute, we feel like we've simplified the image capture routine uh, and also make this product compact, lightweight, easy to move around, um, you know, with the scanner, you have to pick it up, set it down multiple times, you know, so many times in a day. It's not like a total station. Um, so, you know, making it easy to use was uh, was a part of the simplicity focus on this product. <clears throat> with the smart technologies and features built into this um, this unit, we had some some breakthrough innovations here. And the first one being the Trimble X drive. Um, this system allows for enables the automatic calibration of the instrument uh, to really uh, give you the confidence and ensure the accuracy on every single scan and allow you to reduce uh, downtime for your hardware investment. Um, we also have the smarts built into the Trimble Registration Assist, which gives us the ability to have full automatic registration and refinement in the field. Um, also comes with reporting so that when you leave the site, you can leave the site with full confidence in your data. Uh, we've also built in automatic survey grade level compensation. So this is uh, an automatic procedure. There's no more fiddling with uh, uh, level, you know, level screws on your tri uh, You just set the instrument up and go. And then we've also given flexible operations, right? We know that uh, some people have very uh, ingrained survey workflow and survey practice. Uh, with their scanning and um, you know so we wanted to give a flexible operation so that you can have a push button workflow in the field take your data back if you already have a process um, in place for scanning so very flexible operation and we've also introduced uh, the professional nature of this instrument so uh, you know it has to work where our users work that was the one thing that um, we would not compromise on so here's our IP55 rated scanner um, we've introduced a industry leading two-year warranty on this scanner um, we you know the way we've built it and what we believe in with the automatic calibration um, you know we're going to stand behind this product and its durability 
Uh, we have created a high sensitivity time of flight uh, EDM to help effectively capture more of the dark uh, in reflective surfaces that have traditionally been difficult with scanning products. Um, and we wanted to make sure that your data is um, you know, fully redundant. We have onboard SD card storage, uh, but we also have full data transfer to the tablet such that you get um, that data redundancy uh, and, and um, confidence in the system. So, and then operating temperature minus 20 plus 50. So like I said, it works where you work. A brief view at the technical overview. The data sheet is available um, from the website, so you can download and kind of look at all the goodies there. I'll just hit a couple high-level features here. Um, really, some of the important things about this scanner, you know, when we talk about the features, with it, which isn't traditionally data sheet centric, but it's extremely important to note is the automatic calibration of this instrument, uh, the registration assist, and the three arc second accuracy of the survey grade self-leveling. We'll go into more details about that here in a moment on all of these topics. Uh, the measurement range of this instrument is um, 0.6 meters to 80 meter um, accuracy. So 3D point accuracy that you can expect uh, from this scanner is 3.5 millimeters at a 20 meter distance from the instrument. Um, we do have uh, the range noise spec here, uh, less than three millimeters uh, at 60 meters on 80% uh, on albedo reflectivity. So communication, as you can see here in the image, uh, we do pair this with a Trimble T10 tablet. Uh, we're using dual band Wi-Fi. Um, so depending on your situation, indoors, outdoors, uh, it supports both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz operation. Uh, we also can connect to a USB cable if Wi-Fi is simply uh, not allowed on site or not available. Um, that is uh, uh, another method for communication with the instrument. Looking at the speed and scan spacing, um, the thing we wanted to focus on here was really um, allowing you to have the right scan density and, and a good coverage in a short amount of time. So we talk more about the scan duration here. Uh, our fastest scan is 1 minute 34 seconds. It's important to note that that 1 minute and 34 seconds does include the full calibration routine and uh, automatic level. So that is scan, leveling, and auto calibration all in a minute 34 seconds. Uh, the longest scan speed we have um, for is up towards 15 minutes. Um, our MAT guys, our testing group, rarely uses that one, so, but uh, it's it's there um, for high density that if you need it. Um, we have a point spacing anywhere from three and a half mil to uh, eleven point four millimeter at ten meters, depending on which duration you pick, um, and that equates to about anywhere from twelve million to one hundred twenty-five million points in your scan. Uh, scan speed is the standard scan speed is. 500 kilohertz, so half a million points a second. It is always half a million points a second. This is a time of flight scanner, um, so that will not change in the standard setting. We do have a high sensitivity setting um, that does slow things down a bit to 166 kilohertz. But again, those are the those are the two operating speeds. Um, Jason will show you more in his demonstration uh, here towards the end. Um, so stick around. That'll be a good thing to watch. Jason kind of run you through the whole routine, the whole process. The vision system, three integrated cameras. Um, again, we wanted to focus on usability of the imaging system. So the uh, fast panorama capture is in uh, roughly one minute. Um, and the environmental specs we've already kind of gone over here. So the system here. This is a, you know, it's a high-speed 3D laser scanning system that really was, you know, focused on innovations to simplify adoption, increase the efficiency in the field, uh, and provide that confidence that you're leaving the site with the right amount of data. Um, you'll see here this, the X7 scanner itself on top of the tripod. Uh, we have the perspective field software, which is a cornerstone of this whole system. 
uh, beautifully designed and extremely intuitive. Uh, you see the custom Getzo Series 3 tripod. Um, you see the quick release adapter, which is uh, an accessory for the Getzo tripod uh, for quick, easy removal um, from the tripod itself. Uh, and we also have a custom Trimble backpack uh, that is a part of this system. Um, it fits, you know, three batteries, chargers, all the cables, the tablet, um, just real easy to use um, and, and airline carry-on compatible. Additional system components. This unit does operate with our Trimble standard optical battery. Um, so any of you that are familiar with the Trimble S series, the long running S series that, uh, or the SX10, uh, that same battery is being used in, in, this, in this instrument. And of course, Trimble Railworks and Trimble Business Center um, so office software um, for the full data integration to drive towards your customers' deliverables. So with that, um, that's the general overview. I'd like to take a moment to jump into the key features one by one and kind of highlight um, some key parts of this system. So we're going to start with the X drive. Uh, what is the Trimble X drive? This is a, a unique look at um, how to create a scanning system, a vertical deflection system to be more specific. So this X drive is the integration uh, that center unit is mounted on a uh, high accuracy servo uh, grade, you know, survey grade servo drive system. Um, but inside of the center unit is the traditional high speed um, laser scanning deflection mirror that you're used to. Um, it is protected, encapsulated in that center unit. Um, and on the outside of that center unit, since we have a servo, survey grade servo drive system, we have these um, smart coaxial cameras mounted on the outside of that um, center telescope, if you will. Um, all this enables us to really uh, unlock the, uh, the capabilities of the auto calibration system. Um, it allows us to have more productive image capture and it allows us to minimize the parallax with the way we've mounted those cameras. The auto calibration, this is probably one of the bigger questions we got at Energeo. Does it really auto calibrate? Yes. Yes is the answer to that question. Um, this is a full internal auto calibration system without targets or without user interaction, all done in 25 seconds. Um, and the key to this is really we want to ensure the data accuracy on every scan. So we are calibrating uh, the distance and the angles uh, um, from this unit in the field in real time. We also have built in kind of a watchdog or smart calibration monitor in the instrument so that uh, as the instrument stabilizes in temperature, uh, the system is aware of this stabilization and will reduce the calibration process and really run more of a calibration check to make sure something hasn't changed from uh, one to the next. So uh, it's really a smart system. So we've, in our, in our scan times, we've accounted for the full 25 second auto calibration, um, but just note after um, you know, stabilization, which happens in anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on temperature conditions, that time will reduce. Um, but what's the goal behind the auto calibration system, right? Um, what we really wanted to do was enable something to overall lower the cost of ownership of a scanner to help you reduce your overall maintenance costs and burden and just eliminate the downtime that is experienced uh, as, a, as a pain point that we've heard from you all and heard from the market that um, sending units back for weeks at a time, uh, A, can be very costly uh, and wasteful in terms of uh, project downtime. Uh, so we wanted to really eliminate some of those pain points. And in doing so, uh, we've given ourselves the confidence to stand behind this product with our Trimble standard optical two-year warranty. Uh, which is something no one else has today. So moving into some of the other core components of the system, the, the Trimble Perspective software. Um, this, this software is really amazing. I mean, you can give it to someone who's never scanned a day in their life. 
uh, and they can pick up and be going easily with it um, within within a few minutes and simple guidance. Um, so it's really easy to operate for new users, um, but also when you put it in the hands of someone like Jason here later, um, you know, it allows for the total sophisticated controls that an expert user is going to expect. And, and you'll see a little more of that during the demonstration. Um, the, the workflow, the, we did a lot of UI uh, and UX testing for this uh, and user interaction for this um, to really drive towards a simplistic uh, and very intuitive user interface. You get full 3D data visualization on this tablet. Uh, so there's multiple visualization techniques. Um, the beauty of it really is the automated registration. I'll talk more about automated registration on the next slide. But um, as you go, you're seeing the point cloud registered in real time, uh, as you see here on the tablet to the right. Uh, you're also enabled to do annotations, uh, real time measurements. Since we have all this data uh, registered, you know, you know that data shows up. Uh, on the screen so that you have the full project visibility and awareness uh, as you leave the site. The automated registration uh, is built upon Trimble's registration assist. This technology uh, isn't just a software um, feature. It is really a software and hardware feature that come together uh, to enable us to get full registration in the field. So uh, the instrument itself has an IMU uh, inside. It also, as you have heard me say, has a survey grade uh, level compensation. Um, so right there, we're, we're getting some very valuable information out of the hardware uh, and feeding that information into the algorithm of, um, of the Trimble Perspective software. Uh, those two things combine to allow us to register on the fly Typically, if you're doing the, um, the imaging with the instrument in the field, the registration of the previous scan is done before the images are, uh, are finished taken. And, and that was an important step for us to say, you know, okay, if we're going to introduce this registration to the field workflow, we cannot slow down a traditional field workflow. Right, so uh, being able to have that registration done before you're even able to pick up the scanner and move uh, is, is a real home run uh, for this registration assist. But it allows us to really register in the field, know your project completeness, save time when you get back in the office, um, massive amounts of time. And we wanted to ensure that data completeness uh, and avoid any of those costly uh, additional site visits for you know a missed scan or or something like that. So, Trimble Perspective also has the ability to do labeling and annotation. So the labeling is really um, allows us to kind of segment the data out in a logical way. Um, you know, in this example here, we have a building. Um, you know, so. Being able to segment out labels and floors uh, can really help you uh, limit the data that you're looking at um, so to avoid the complexity on the screen, right? So if I'm just worried about uh, I'm on floor two and I'm just registering things around floor two, I can turn off floor one and floor three or you know, segment that data as necessary to help with the visualization and help you focus on your area of interest. We also have annotations, which allow you to uh, document um, key components as you go through the, um, the, the site. Um, you know, this is important because, well, conveying that information that's in the field is not always easy. Uh, sometimes it's multiple days since you've been out on a project site and you're trying to remember exactly what it was you saw on that site. So, um, when the scanner is scanning, you can easily go annotate um, areas from your previous scans, take pictures of those things, um, and it just really helps either you or the person um, working on your data back in the office understand the scene uh, and get those key components. Uh, these are available in both 3D and station views. Uh, and a couple of us have also used the annotations as, um, uh, let's say, registration markers or registration checks if you will, 
Um, so in some repetitive situations or things where um, algorithm could be confused about registration, you can easily set up a couple of annotations. And once the registration is done, you can get a really quick visual indication of whether or not the registration was successful if those annotations uh, overlap effectively. So, you know, it can be, they can be used in, in different ways and different tools to really uh, to help give you more awareness of the site is really the, the key there. <clears throat> Measurements. So, with the registered data in the field, I mean, uh, you know, looking back on the history and the legacy of a scanner, you think about um, it's always been viewed as a capture device. So I'm, I'm out in the field and I'm just capturing data and I take it back to the office and then I do something with that data, right? Um, we kind of want to change that and we feel like the, that needs to change and that will change. Uh, and this is part of that change, right? Is making decisions in the field immediately with the data you've captured. Um, and they can be as simple in this case as uh, a clearance, right? So we have um, different measurement constraints. We have, you know, horizontal based measurement constraints. Again, we have the survey grade um, uh, automatic leveling, three arc seconds, so we can actually constrain horizontal vertical measurements accurately. Um, we also have area views that are available in top down. Um, and then we have, you know, unconstrained measurements as well. So point to point, um, um, and, you know, direct measurements. So. Uh, but a good way to start really using that scan data uh, immediately in the field. Looking back on the hardware aspects, um, we talked a bit about the time of flight ADM before. Uh, we have a range accuracy here of uh, two millimeters with that range noise we discussed earlier, minus three millimeters and 60 meters. Um, you know, really the, the goal behind this one was how do we you know, how do we balance the, the range and the need to capture difficult services for our customers uh, in the speed, in the data size? Uh, and we feel like we've hit a nice sweet spot with, um, with the speed at a half a million points per second out to a range of 80 meters um, and really, you know, focused on getting that data size right and complete uh, as you go in the field. So in the scan, in the demo that Jason's going to go over, um, and this is also available on the uh, data sheet as well, but we really focus on the left-hand column here, the duration, uh, and we're kind of rounding up um, to kind of set the expectation. So that scan that I showed earlier, that's one minute and 34 seconds. Uh, when you see it in the in the um, in the scan window, it's, it's stated as two minutes, um, but that is the standard scan mode. You see the spacing. Um, and then all the way down to the 15 minute duration, which is the high sensitivity, um, which has equally tight of spacing as the seven minute standard scan. Um, so here you get an idea of, of just overall um, duration, spacing, and importantly, on the right hand side, also uh, maximum file size. So that is just the scan file size. That doesn't include images, but um, you know, these are. I would say reasonably uh, sized scan files um, in order to ensure that the workflow is quick and easy um, and not long and burdensome. So smart uh, Trimble Vision 360. So as you saw, the center unit has three coaxial 10 megapixel cameras mounted uh, on that center unit. Um, it allows us to really have a very fast image capture, so a roughly one minute uh, in, in good lighting conditions there for the, the fast 15 image capture. We also have uh, a quality setting, um, so when you have objects that are extremely close up to your scanner, you would probably bump it up to the quality setting, uh, which adds another minute, but uh, really overall, you know, some, some fast image acquisition options there. Um, the, the raw data size, uh, you can see there 158 megapixels for the raw data size and the quality mode uh, 316. Uh, so that is just the raw uh, image acquisition. We do have a few options for white balance. Uh, some, I think of two indoor presets and two outdoor presets. 
uh, to really just give you kind of the control uh, to, to get the right image quality. There is also an automatic setting uh, if you just kind of want to run with that. But we recommend going with the presets uh, as they've been fine-tuned to, to work in those conditions. So, um, But really focused on image quality. Here you can see some examples of uh, the Trimble, um, the fast image acquisition. So on the right-hand side is the full field of view panorama. You can see the clouds and everything from the images. Uh, on the left-hand side, the lower left-hand side, that is the colorized point cloud uh, from from that image capture. So, really quick and accurate. Um, you can you can choose to um, colorize your scan in the field if you'd like. Uh, typically, we reserve that process to the finalize and export part of the project, but uh, you can colorize individual scans in the field uh, if you see the need for that. For the panorama creation, we have two options for this, and, and actually it's really not an option, it's just the, the workflow choice. So we've decided that in the, in the field, in order to just make things as quick and fast as possible to give you uh, that visualization, because in the field, panoramas are typically being used for uh, just visualization of the data to make sure you have uh, the right scene capture, there's nothing in the way. Um, but we have a fast option, um, which uses kind of a fixed distance uh, to minimize the mismatches. Um, this is you know, pretty good for simple scenes, um, but it really preserves the speed of the workflow and the battery life of the tablet. When you export the uh, project, there's an option to uh, create the quality panorama. And what that does is uses the, the real point cloud distances to uh, to minimize the mis mismatch and do the blending uh, of the images so it, it spits out a much better panorama towards the end uh, and that gives a better customer experience automatic level compensation so for us the the goal here was to not compromise the accuracy of the system with the productivity um, that you're looking to achieve with scanning so as long as you set the system up within plus or minus five degrees, which um, is shockingly easy, but it's you know roughly eyeball level, um, you'll get a three arc second level compensation on your scan data. Um, this does work upside down, as you can see in the manhole here. Um, one of our testers, Brian, had this set up uh, just to just prove a principle, but yeah, it does work upside down. Uh, the scanner itself will work up to 45 degrees tilt. Um, that will be a coarse leveling, so that will not be the survey grade. Um, but you know, you can you can do a few of those throughout the site, and they will all be registered and adjusted back to those uh, survey constrained uh, scans. Overall, the driver behind this was to speed up the field process, reduce the errors and save you time from having to, to set up and level each instrument. Um, you can get new people going without have to, having to re, you know, say why you have to level the instrument up and all this stuff. It's just, hey, less, less field expertise. Um, you can send somebody out there and ensure that the data that comes back is going to be quality. Um, you can um, switch this auto leveling on or off. Um, that will reduce the time in your setup process. However, um, as I talked about before with the Trimble Registration Assist, one of the key components of that um, is, the, is the auto leveling. So um, we recommend leaving that on. Uh, there is a real-time aspect to this. So if the scanner is disrupted or bumped or moved during uh, a scan, uh, the system will, will shut down and, um, well, it won't shut down, sorry. It will stop scanning and delete that scan. As I said before, we were focused on this, um, this idea for compact and portable for a scanner, um, but one thing we didn't want to compromise on was data integrity and system stability. Uh, so where we landed really is, is kind of that, what we feel is a perfect size for stability and transportability. 
uh, somewhere roughly in the size of a, a total station, if you're familiar with, uh, weighing in at you know about a gallon of milk. That's how Jason likes to say it. Um, but you know, scanner dimensions that really kind of fit a, a total station um, body type. We did make a custom backpack. You can see it checked on on a United flight here. Uh, but we went through the full list of airlines worldwide uh, and made sure that we fit most all major carriers for, um, you know, a, a reasonable size aircraft for carry on checkable or sorry, carry on compatible. Um, the custom Gitzo Series 3 tripod lightweight, um, you'll see there the bell adapter. Um, is a 5 8 thread. Yes, this uh, scanner has a uh, traditional 5 8 thread on the bottom. Uh, that's important because we've had a few customers um, want the survey stability of a survey tripod out in the field. That was important to them, so um, this will work with your standard survey tripods already. Um, but also, you know, we've specifically designed this uh, Gitzo tripod to be lightweight easy to transport, folds down really nice. So, um, Also, the quick release adapter we talked about before, that's an accessory. Uh, if you find yourself um, taking the scanner on and off the tripod, you know, for odd setups, either uh, above ceiling tiles or on the floor or anything like that, um, you have the ability to, to have this quick release adapter for, for easy on and off. One more time on the professional nature of the scanning, the, the instrument here was really designed and built with our customers' needs in mind. So there, it's gonna go out and work in the coldest of temperatures and uh, all the way up into plus 50. Um, the IP55, the ingress for protection of dust and water jet. So we have uh, encapsulated that rotating mirror again in the center of that, um, telescope or the, the center of the servo drive system in the center. Um, and we've also built this technology on a very mature, robust, and stable uh, servo drive system. So it's extremely highly reliable um, deflection mirror, uh, long lifetime, uh, but almost equally as important, low friction, low power consumption, uh, and it's virtually silent. Um, the, I don't think I've talked about this yet, but the operating time for a standard battery, so I talked about the Trimble standard optical battery, uh, we're getting roughly four hours out of a Trimble, um, current Trimble optical battery. Uh, that, for one of our customers, um, they took this unit for a test drive, one of our beta customers, uh, and they had 85 scans done and the battery was still going. Um, both in the instrument and the tablet. So just to kind of give you a gauge of, of where we were targeting there for, for battery usage. Um, we do have the industry leading two year warranty and this product is, is was designed in both Jena, Germany and uh, Paris, France. So we've uh, combined some engineering teams here to develop this scanner for you. Uh, and the scanner is produced and manufactured actually um, in Jena, Germany, which is considered the birthplace of optics. We also have the full workflow flexibility. So everything I've been talking about here with the Trimble Perspective tablet um, workflow is what we call the connected workflow. Um, at the whole time, the data syncing back to the tablet, it's registering in real time. As you go, you see all the data coming in and registering. We also have a push button workflow if you also have the tablet connected um, where you just push the button, the scans will still sync back to the tablet. Let's say the tablet's in your backpack or something like that. Um, and the system will still go through the registration routine as you go, um, but you're just pushing the button on the tablet to try to um, speed up that part of the process. Uh, and the third and final is what we're calling the, the disconnected, or this is what I would call more of a, a traditional or classic scanning workflow. So the scanner simply uses the last scan settings that you have used. So, um, you know, let's say you use the, the, the quick scan, the, the two minute scan setting. Um, so it'll just use that by default as the last scan setting. You push the button, it does the routine, yes or no, do I take images? It depends on your last scan setting. 
and it'll do that. And then all the data is just stored on the SD card. Um, later, you can import that data into Trimble Perspective, and it will actually walk through one by one and try to register pairwise for you. Um, or you can bring that data into uh, Trimble RealWorks, for example, at Trimble Business Center, uh, and do the registration there in the office if that is your preferred workflow. So some flexibility there in, in how you utilize this hardware. We also have the ability to do refinement in exporting directly in the field. So we talked about full project registration. It's not a joke. It's full registration in Trimble Perspective. Um, and you have the option to export into numerous formats right there from the Perspective software. Um, those include the E57 or uh, gridded and non-gridded, uh, the LAS. So those are all industry standard formats. Um, you can export an RCP file directly from the controller. You can export a POD, a PTX. So all of this is in that refinement phase. Um, so what we've talked about is um, the registration in the field is a pairwise. So it will always register uh, by default back to the scan before it. Um, or you can tell it uh, in, you know, if individually which scan to register to. Or, and then at the end, sorry, at the end of your project, there, when you export, there is a refine all, and that does a global refinement, all stations to all stations that they can see one another and then export out into these industry standard formats. Of course, the full data integrity is really going to come with the Trimble Office software export. So when you go to Trimble RealWorks or Trimble Business Center, that's where you get the full integrity of the panoramas, you get the full integrity of the labeling, you get the full integrity of your annotations, right? The industry standard formats don't uh, support those types of additional uh, scan data. Uh, the Trimble Data Exchange file does. Uh, so we can push that data straight to RealWorks and Trimble Business Center for the best customer experience and the best user experience, I would say, uh, for the data integrity piece back in the office. And with the, the office workflow, um, we've kind of set ourselves a, a bar with, I would say, the SX10 workflow, at least in my mind. I may be biased. Uh, but the, the drag and drop of the JXL into TBC or RealWorks uh, from an SX10, um, you know, it was just such a simple streamlined workflow. It's great. So we have that same streamlined workflow here with the TDX file from uh, uh, Trimble Perspective. Simply drag and drop the data files right into um, TBC or RealWorks. You get all the scan labels, you get all the annotations, um, and uh, you know it, it presents itself like the data you would expect does uh, in those office softwares. So looking at the customer applications, um, the user applications, so as you may be aware, I mean, scanning can find its home and any number of survey applications. And the longer we go, uh, the more and more uh, scanning fi finds a home, you know, whether it's buildings, industrial surveys, um, you know, civil infrastructure, bridges, things that are hard to reach, topographic surveys, more day-to-day -day surveys, I would say there. Uh, forensics is a, you know, big adopter of scanning. So th this list isn't meant to be exhaustive, just to kind of give you some examples. Um, I'll dive into a few and where the benefits of the X7 really are. Um, so for the survey services for buildings, um, you know, I'm looking at when I was a surveyor, condo maps, things like that, that were uh, just rather annoying um, to draw up and, you know, all the measurements taking place in, in large condo maps. Um, you know, this can really streamline that process. Um, our friends in Europe um, have a lot of elevate, facade elevation, mapping uh, that's required and then you know large facility managements right anything that's complex facilities uh, this, this scanner and system is perfect for the labeling can really help you kind of group those assets um, by location annotations to call out specific items um, in areas of interest um, and really to help ensure the full data integrity 
One interesting thing about the, the building construction side of it or the survey services for the building construction is, uh, you know, when we look at floor flatness um, as, a, uh, as a deliverable, uh, the, the survey grade leveling really plays a key part here uh, because you don't need an additional piece of instrument. Um, we've heard that uh, some folks either carry laser levels out to give truth or additional total stations. Um, to give you level control on the floor. Uh, you don't need that with this instrument. You can just bring this one instrument out um, and, and have your survey grade level uh, measured with the system itself. Industrial surveys, um, you know, this, prod this product really gives us the ability to go you know, versatility from these small kind of as-builts of uh, a tank. Uh, so we can do tank inspection that you can see on the upper right. Um, or these kind of complex projects where uh, this particular customer, CAM Integrated Survey, was doing a, um, a P&ID tag asset identification on the valves uh, here on the lower right-hand corner. So you can see that the annotations were being used to um, mark key assets and the images were being used to document the PID labels on these um, to kind of help streamline two process here, um, whether it's the scanning of the site or the PNID drawing, uh, they're doing both at the same time, helping ensure data quality. So uh, civil infrastructure side, I mean, this one's a no-brainer, comprehensive um, data, fast data capture from a safe, uh, safe system setup, um, and that ensures the data completeness without our site revisits. We have topographic general surveys, so you know improved visibility on all of our projects. Um, you know even as small um, Alta projects or just small topographic projects, that this the scanner can just really help you get complete site details uh, and, and help you speed up data collection. The forensics, the key there is just complete scene visibility, evidence annotations. Uh, and the ability to measure in the field, that's a big one for these folks, um, you know, knowing things right away or having the ability to, to extract information immediately uh, from the, the data captured. And again, the, the examples go on and on. Um, the list is pretty exhaustive, but what I want to do now is, uh, you know, I really want to welcome the Trimble X7 to the scanning portfolio from Trimble. Uh, including the TX series, TX6 and TX8, and obviously the SX10. But for now, I am going to give you a demonstration, or Jason, sorry, is going to give you a demonstration of the um, uh, X7 and perspective scanning system. Hi, everyone. So you've heard a lot about the X7 and how it's simple, smart, and professional. It's probably hard to get a picture in your mind of how it all comes together. So what I'd like to do is give you a quick demo, do a few scans, just to show you how the whole solution works. So I'm going to start out by using the Perspective software, I'm going to create a new project, I'm just going to click Create New, we'll give it a name, we'll call it Demo, and I can also go in and take a photo, just so it's easy to identify this project. Okay, it's a nice photo, I'm going to Click Create. Software is going to go through and create the project. Once that done is done, then we're going to go in and select our scan settings and start scanning. So if I look at the bottom of the screen here, I see it says Start Scan. There's a selection menu here. And the first thing that we do is select a scan time. So there's four different times. There's a two minute, a four minute, a seven minute, and a 15 minute scan option. Let's just take a look at the four minute. So I can see that it's going to give me a spacing of 50, or a, a number of points of about 58 million points. And it's going to give me a spacing of five millimeters all the way out at 10 meters. Now the scanner goes all the way out to 80 meters. So if I tap on show more, I can see the scan spacing at various distances all the way out to that 80 meters. Now you'll also notice that there's two other buttons here. There's one that says standard, one that says high sensitivity. The standard is your normal high-speed scanning that you're going to use most of the time. Standard, you're going to use that when you have 
difficult objects, such as black or shiny objects, out at far distances. You can select high sensitivity, it's gonna slow the scanner down. Make sure that you pick up those difficult objects out at those far distances. But in this case, I'm indoor, I'm not worried about any of that, so I'm going to leave it on standard. Just going to change the scan time to two minutes so we can get through the demo quicker. And the next thing I need to do is look at images. So we can turn the images on or off. I can see that when they're off, the scan time down here at the bottom is actually only going to be about a minute and a half. Turning those on, it's going to add about a minute to my scan time. Now capturing images will allow you to colorize your point cloud and create panorama views. Uh, having a colorized point cloud is just going to make it look very real when you're looking at it in 3D later. The next thing I need to do is select my white balance. I'm indoor and under fluorescent lights, so I'm going to select fluorescent. And the lights on my scanner are green, which means that it's ready to go. I can see that I'm connected up in the upper left here, so I'm going to click Start Scan. So the lights have changed blue, lets me know that it's starting the scan process. And it's going to do a few strange movements here. What this is, is the auto calibration. Now you've heard about this before. But this is really a big deal, and for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to ensure that your data is as good as it should be. The second is that most manufacturers of scanners recommend you send your scanners in once a year for a calibration, and this can cost thousands of dollars, and it can tie your scanner up for days, if not weeks at a time. So having the auto calibration built right into the instrument is going to give you peace of mind that your data is as good as it should be, and it's also going to save you that financial hit every year having to send your scanner in for a calibration. In fact, there's no need to send it in at all unless it's broken. Now, a little bit more about the scanner. It's weighing in at only 5.8 kilograms, barely more than a gallon of milk. Makes it small and light, easy to work with. Also makes it great for transporting, especially in the soft shell case which meets their carry-on requirements for most airlines. Now you don't have to ship your scanner to your project or check it where who knows what, what happened with the airline. You just put it in the overhead bin and away you go. It's also got a great environmental protection rating of IP55, helping to protect it from dust and water. It's also got an exceptional temperature range of minus 20 to plus 50 C. For those of you that don't want to have to convert in your head, it's a minus four to plus 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you add the auto calibration in, you add in the IP rating, the temperature range, also allows us to offer what I think is an industry first for laser scanners, a two year standard warranty. So again, a very professional solution. Now, if I look over here, you'll see that the scanner has finished the scan. It's now capturing the images. You see the three cameras there as it's rotating around. While it's capturing these images, it's downloading the data to the tablet. You can see that it's been downloaded here. And you'll watch here, it's going to do an auto orientation. This is another smart feature. It's taking my data and aligning the walls to my screen. It makes it very intuitive and easy to understand while you're in the field. Now, it's brought it in, it's loaded the data, it's done the auto orientation, the images are just about done. Okay, they just finished, the lights have turned green, lets me know that I'm ready to move to my next station. Now, I'm just going to move it over here a little bit, not too far, try to keep it in frame of the camera. And I'm ready to scan. While it's here, I'll tell you a little bit more about this. This instrument also has self-leveling capabilities. So as long as it's within about 30 degrees, it's going to apply self-leveling. As long as the scanner is within five degrees, it's going to kick in the compensator and get that to a survey grade leveling. Now you're probably saying, what is survey grade leveling? It's going to get it within three arc seconds. So if you're doing any kind of floor levelness analysis, or wall or structure verticality or storage tank inspection, you're really going to want to have that survey grade leveling to make sure that everything is truly plumb. Now, just so I don't waste any more time, I'm going to go ahead and start this scan. Now, again, this, I, it's fairly level here, but again, I didn't take a lot of care in doing that. Now, while it's scanning, let me show you a little bit on the software side. So the data, you can see it here, this is a top-down view. If I click up here to rotate in 3D, I can rotate around and look at the 3D data. Now, being able to visualize this data in the field, it's going to ensure that you capture all of the data that you need and that you don't skip any place important. 
Now, I can also look at this data in what we call a, a station-based view. I'm just watching the scanner so I don't get in the way it's so fast it's actually hard to, to keep out of the way. Just going to move here. Now, looking in this station-based view, I can do a number of things. I'm actually just going to change this to a little bit brighter color. I can take measurements right here in the field. So let's look at this door, for example. If I wanted to measure this for width or a height, maybe I need to bring some equipment in. I want to check for clearance. We'll just lock this to a Z measurement. I'm just going to click on the top. You can click down here on the floor. Very quickly, I've got this clearance measurement right here in the field. Now, in addition, I can also go in and add annotations. So if I click on here and click annotation, for example, let's put an annotation right on this exit sign. I'm going to click Create New, tap on the exit sign. We'll give it a name, exit, sign, and we'll do a quick photo. All right, save. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to find these features while I'm right here in the field and it's easy to see them. Okay, actually, I'm going to skip over here real quick. It's uh, doing the auto registration. I'm just going to switch back to a top view here. Now what it's doing is it's taking the second scan and it's automatically registering it to the first scan. So you can see the second scan here showed up in this blue color. The original one was that green color. And it's just going to take a few seconds here. All right. And if I tap on that, Oh, the notification went way too fast. I can tap here. I can see some residuals on that registration, how well it's fitting to that. I can also go in quickly, use this kind of adjuster on the side to go in and look at how well these two scans are lining up. So this is a cutting plane I used on the side to remove the floor and the ceiling so I can look straight down on these scans to make sure that they're aligning the way that I want. Now, Back to my station-based view, create my annotation. What this does is it allows the guy in the office to quickly see the features that are important without having to spend hours sorting through the data looking for those himself when the guy in the field was able to see them and quickly put annotations on them in the field. So that's pretty much it to the system. It's that easy, it's that smart, and it's that professional. That quickly, I've done two scans. I've got them self-registered. I've also got, oh, I didn't show you the images, Got the images in the station-based view. You can use those to colorize my scan. I've taken measurements. I've created annotations. And that's really it. So great system, simple, smart, and professional. And we have a number of questions uh, being asked, and uh, we're going to go through that now. So uh, first question uh, is, is the tablet included in the package? So yes, um, tablet is included in the recommended package here. So uh, when we re go to market in early 2020, uh, we will have uh, introductory kits that include the tablet, the uh, quick release adapter, the backpack, the uh, um, tripod and everything. And that includes the software. So um, in, in 2020, again, there'll be promotional packages uh, to kick off the, the product introduction. Um, there's a question about, is there a hard case suitable for checking baggage on flights? The, so the standard case that we ship in to ensure uh, um, that the product is taken care of is a hard case. Uh, the backpack is actually an accessory, um, but it, again, is a part of that introductory kit. So standard hard case. Um, there's a question on what is the recommended number of scans in one project? Yeah, I wouldn't say that there's any recommended number of scans. The, the software is going through and handling uh, the number of scans that come in and assigning resources. So it works well with large or small projects. Continue on the next one, I guess. Yeah. Next question, how many scans can be displayed? Uh, so the tablet is managing the number of points. Uh, based on how many resources it has. So you can have quite a few scans on there. Uh, we've done several hundred before. Um, so that's, that's no problem. Um, can the data connect directly to TBC? So TBC can import the data directly as a TDX file or it can import... Yep, so TBC can handle any of the uh, export formats coming out of perspective. So it goes straight into there or RealWorks. And we have a connected question from Mohammed. 
in office what is recommended TBC or Trimble Reworks? Well, <laughs> uh, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of heavy survey applications where you're doing line work or combining other sensors such as GNSS, uh, TBC is the way to go. If you're doing a lot of, I guess, BIM activities or inspection, comparison, design against as built, um, then RealWorks will probably give you a, a bigger uh, tool set. Sounds good. Next question we have uh, from Mark. How is the point accuracy 3.5 millimeters at 20 meters when the point spacing is 3.5 millimeters at 10 meters? So there are actually uh, two different concepts, uh, resolution and accuracy. Um, to make a parallel, uh, think about a tape measure. Resolution would be how close your markings on the tape are, and accuracy would be how accurately the markings are printed on the tape measure. The resolution is the angular spacing between points in the case of a laser scanner. Uh, the X7 can have resolution between 3.5 and 11.4 millimeters at 10 meters. And we are expressing that as a millimeter spacing at a specific distance, but it's actually more an angular spacing. Uh, 3D point accuracy is actually the combination of distance accuracy and the two angular accuracy to make the 3D point. Uh, distance accuracy for DX7 is two millimeters for the entire range. Angular accuracy is 21 arc seconds. When combined, it gives you 2.4 millimeters at 10 meters, 3.5 meter, millimeters at 20 meters, or 6 millimeters at 40. There's a question about um, can perspective software support the ability to extract targets? So currently, uh, perspective software isn't extracting targets. The scanner, however, certainly captures the targets. If you want to use targets as part of your registration, uh, you can use Trumbull RealWorks to use the auto-target extraction in there. Yeah, second part of the question uh, from Harry is uh, registering scan to a known coordinate system in the field. So we can't do that in the field uh, today, uh, but you can certainly do that in both EDC or Trumbull RealWorks. Next question uh, from Jeremy is, can labels and annotations include tagged photos taken from the tablet? Uh, so with the annotations in perspective, you can use the tablet to take photos of any of the objects that you create an annotation on. Uh, those annotations will transfer over uh, both to TBC and Trimble RealWorks. Next question from Jeffrey, what is the camera sensor size? So it's uh, uh, the, each camera are 10 megapixel each, uh, and you get the three of them uh, for fast acquisition. Second, next question uh, from Hamed: Can we export panorama photos? Yeah. So the software is creating uh, panorama photos. Um, I'm trying to think if we export a panorama directly out of perspective. I don't believe so, uh, but RealWorks and TBC are using the panorama, or not using, but you can export the panorama photos there. Next question from Jared. Can, can Trimble Perspective be installed on a custom tablet? Uh, the answer is yes. It is uh, um, offered uh, with uh, the introductory packages that Chris talked about together with the Trimble T10 tablet but um, any Windows 10 tablet with the proper specification in terms of CPU and memory uh, and graphic cards uh, can work. Uh, we have all of the specifications available uh, on the website. Uh, if you go on the data sheet, you will see what is the minimum requirements for the uh, tablet to run Trimble Perspective. So there's a question about, can I use GPS instruments with the X7? So that is going to be in combination with the, you know, bringing all the data together in TBC. Uh, that would be my recommendation if you're looking at uh, integration with uh, traditional survey instruments, uh, bringing that data, merging it back into TBC. The interesting thing is also, you know, bringing in uh, SX10 data sets and um, those those point clouds are scaled uh, based on your coordinate system. Uh, bringing those in and using them as like a reference scan and then adding X7 scans on top uh, will, you know, you can register to those scaled point clouds and in effect scale the X7 data. Uh, there is a question about um, 
is perspective part of TBC? And then the follow-up question is, if using TBC, uh, is additional licensing required for full functionality of post-process? So uh, perspective is its own software. It's not a part of TBC. Um, but in TBC, what you need is the scanning uh, module in TBC to support the full functionality of, um, of the X7 and perspective. Uh, there's a question about exporting the photos in topo dot format. I believe that would all also be handled through the TBC software and not directly from uh, Perspective itself. There's a question about can you do an area scan like you can with the TX series? So um, yes, you can do the same kind of thing where you can start a scan and then stop it um, uh, after it's passed your area of interest and save that scan data. So Chris, um, if, if you've been using the TX in that way, you can use the X7 in that way. Oh, to be uh, to be uh, clear on the on the question, in the TX there is a, f a functionality where you get you define your area by yourself, uh, the the horizontal extent of the area. Uh, it's not per se uh, the, the the exact same feature being supported in the X7 as Chris mentioned. Uh, the best way to do an area scan and just to, let's say, scan just, I don't know, 45 degrees of your field of view, just the building you have in front of you, is to start the scan and stop it when you think you're done. Question about can we change time to custom times? I'm assuming that means the scanning times. Uh, no, the scanning times are set uh, based on the resolutions we've chosen um, for perspective. So. Can it work inverted? Yes, uh, we showed a picture of that in the slides. It can work inverted uh, and you get survey grade level compensation when you're within plus or minus five degrees of uh, level, or sorry, verticality. Yeah, we have a number of questions uh, from, uh, uh, from you guys around the pricing of the system. Uh, so I will encourage you to reach out to your local dealer uh, to get more information on that. Um, as you've probably heard during the, the, the presentation or seen the press release, uh, the system has been announced uh, at Intergeo, but will be available in Q1. So uh, pricing will, uh, will follow. Uh, so reach out to your local dealers uh, to get in touch and have this information soon. Next question from Abby is, does Trimble Perspective work with the TX series? Uh, so no, Trimble Perspective is dedicated to the X7. Uh, the TX series uh, can work with his uh, onboard screen and also with uh, uh, um, tablets or smartphone applications uh, using a remote desktop application that connects to the instruments. So these are two different ways of using the systems. Next question from Tom. Uh, what kind of distance will you get, say, scanning a cold pipe? Very interesting question. We actually um, have a specific mode that is called eye sensitivity that has been specifically designed uh, for this type of situations where you want some more range on, on very dark uh, or actually shiny material, so everything that is not usually friendly to laser scanners. Um, this eye sensitivity mode is uh, uh, reducing speed but boosting the laser power uh, for each point being measured, and uh, you get uh, uh, way way better performances than uh, most of the laser scanners that we've seen. So it's a very interesting feature. I encourage you to. Uh, uh, reach out and uh, and go for the test phase when the unit is going to be available. Um, we got a question: What kind of system is used on the tablet? Uh, so it's a Windows 10 operating system. Yep. Uh, and we'll take the last question. Uh, so, so, what type of export do you make when you want to export to TBC? Uh, so for TBC or RealWorks, either one, the best export is going to be the, T, the TDX file format, and it's going to transfer over any of your labels or annotations that you've taken with the uh, with perspective. Okay. 
So we've gone a bit of a time. Thank you everyone for staying with us. Uh, we had a bit uh, of additional questions coming uh, while we were uh, talking about them. So uh, we will we get all of them being there and we'll reach out um, to, to you with, with answers. Uh, Sophie wanted to tell a few words about uh, uh, What's, what's coming? So we have on the October 30th, um, a 8 a.m. Westminster time and 4 p.m. Westminster time. Um, so two sessions on the 30th of October, a TBC Power Hour that is introducing the Trimble X7 scanning solution with the Trimble Business Center. Um, we have currently already on our geospatial website a sign up for this, um, but there'll also be invites going out. Um, you can go into the webinar section of our geospatial website and um, you'll find the registration link for that. And that, that, yeah, just a word that will be a fantastic webinar, really showing how the X7 integrates with the rest uh, of the Trimble ecosystem. So how you use the X7 with the S610, how you use the X7 with a Genesis receiver R10 or even Total Station. So we will have uh, a lot of examples uh, showing uh, how you can really mix the different uh, instruments you have together in Trimble Business Center. And then one more last information is uh, to download the data sheet to get all the specs and everything um, and or to just learn more and watch videos, um, please go to our geospatial.trimble.com slash x7 website. Um, otherwise you can always um, reach out to our product marketing teams. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thanks.